This is an Itch Your Break production, so sit back and take a break. Welcome to Itch Your Break. Hi, I'm Jonathan Mertz, and today's guest is Sabrina Oso from Oso Safe. Whoa, what is Oso Safe? Well, it's a company designed to promote and to prevent home abuse. And their whole motto is, you've got to be safe at home, at work, and at play. And we'll find out more about it coming up next here on It's Your Break. It's Your Break will return right after this. Subscribe to the It's Your Break podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. And now, back to It's Your Break. Welcome back to It's Your Break. Hi, I'm Jonathan Mertz, and today's guest is Sabrina Oso from Oso Safe, whose entire company is designed to prevent domestic violence. But they don't call it domestic violence. They call it home violence and home abuse. Why do y'all take that approach, Sabrina? Yes, um, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Domestic violence has such a stigma that it is a woman's problem, and clearly it is not. And secondly, it assumes that all of the victims are female, and that's not true either. So we prefer to say home violence. It's more inclusive because your home environment could be, you could be living with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your ex, your children, your stepchildren, your grandparents, and an episode of violence can occur in any one of those combinations. So I prefer to say home violence. I think people will connect with that more without any sti- less stigma, if you will. That's interesting. That's interesting. So let's let's kind of go back in time and, and find out why you started Oh So Safe and, and how that came to be. Were you a victim or, or close contact with, with some type of home violence? Yes. Uh, my father beat my mother on a regular basis. Um, I, I've had years of therapy to be comfortable enough to say that. Uh, but um, I feel like uh, if I don't say it, then I'm not doing oh so safe justice, you know, uh, and, and not even for the for my clients or my um, audience, if you will. Uh, but yes, it was very it was pretty traumatic. Uh, a lot of violence, abuse, chaos, dysfunction, the whole works. And, um, uh, but also safe, uh, I mean, I, I'm a dancer and I did not start dancing though until in my early, early twenties, um, because I, I had no one to take me to dance at five years old. I couldn't even think about dance, uh, at such a young age, um, because of all the, chaos that was going on in my household. So I started dancing in my early 20s and I was just Im- deeply immersed and submerged in the dance world. And um, I started writing my one woman show um, and it was called Home Sweet Home. And I play different women being abused and uh, but she goes to her good place. That's where the dancing comes in. But then she's pulled back into the terror of violence uh, of her home life. But the show ends really strong, really empowering. And I did a lot of research for the show. And I I could not believe the statistics that I was finding. Um, I I, I was shocked. And I said to myself, I have to make this into a business. I have to make this into an actual uh, a business providing products and services to really help people out. And that's how Oh So Safe was born, really, out of my one-woman show. Um, uh, yeah, I hope I answered your question. No, I know you, sometimes you absolutely I go did. off on a tangent. <laughs> you absolutely did. That's not a problem. You know, it, it, it's fascinating to hear people's backgrounds, even if it's tragic, and, and to learn from their experiences. Um, my background was where I got to deal with domestic violence and and things like that was not in my intermediate family, but it was in extended families um, 
one of my great aunts and uncles, they took in foster kids and that came from these types of environments and over 200 uh, kids they've had throughout their entire uh, time as foster parents and adopted several kids uh, from the, from the foster, uh, you know, foster uh, program. So I understand some of the severity, but then I got a firsthand experience with this more so of, of, of a reaction basically as a dispatcher for the Kentucky state police. So I got to hear these domestic calls come in and quite frequently, as most people will realize women are going to be the, the brunt end. But as you mentioned earlier, they're not the only ones. And I learned that firsthand experience as well uh, from being a dispatcher. And you do have those rare occasions where a call comes in and a man is being, abused but you're like well that's a little weird you know because just because uh, you just don't think about it and and there is a stigma behind that why do you think you know it, there is less reporting of men or is, are, are men more per perpetrators than women or why is that uh there is a statistic that 85 percent of all spouse murderers are male there's another statistic though that one out of seven men is abused so, uh, abuse is abuse. It doesn't matter the gender that the hand occupies. Abuse is abuse. So, uh, men will not report it or be less likely to report it because they get the comments, what's the matter? Can't you keep your woman in line? Be a man, man up. Uh, what do you mean she beat you? She's five foot two. Um, your your stand up for yourself um what's the matter with you uh you, you're the ceo of so and so company or i thought you were better than this i mean the whole gamut of stereotypes and judgments and um but like i said abuse is abuse and um uh it's horrible whoever's the victim uh it's horrible and the children suffer the most so um, I encourage men that are in abusive relationships to report it, to, uh, to say something, to confide in someone. Um, and, and I'm proud of my company, how I designed it, because it, it, it's whoever's being abused. You know, it, it could be male, female. Uh, like I said, children are always victims in these situations. So, uh, and I'm glad I designed it that way because... We, we want to be inclusive and we want to help anyone that's hurting or even not hurting. Um, they're an, in, they are instrumental in this equation. If you are not going through violence, first of all, I want to say <laughs> great job, continue doing a good job. If you have love, support, uh, nurturing positivity in your household, keep it up. We need you. Uh, because you're, you're the example. You are actually what everyone needs to achieve or practice. Um, so, so yeah, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And for those that, that, that haven't familiarized yourself, go on, go on YouTube and, and, and watch Sabrina's Ted talks from, 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 you know, the New York, New Jersey city university there. And she goes over a lot of these statistics in there. And I find it fascinating that you have so many statistics in the beginning of that, that talk. Uh, and as you, you you talked about your one woman show, how much work it went into. One of the things that thought that I went through my mind as I heard, you know, about men being abused and things like that is statistical breakdown on who's abusing them. Do you see more abuse statistically? I don't know if you've done the research on this part, but with homosexual relationships versus heterosexual relationships, or how does it does it doesn't even matter? Uh, good question. Um, you know, I should know some statistics on, uh, like same gender, um, same gender relationships or, uh, uh, transgender relationships. Um, uh, but it happens probably off more often than not in these types of relationships, because then you have the whole equation of, well, you're, you're, you're gay, you're, you're a lesbian, you're, I'm going to out you if you don't do what I say. Um, it's a whole other layer 
of abuse that can happen ah. because they'll use that as a weapon. Yeah, especially of, if they're not know. fully out. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't right. think about they, that aspect. They, they'll use that as a, um, just as I said, uh, like a weapon, a uh, like ammunition almost. Uh, but yes, it happens. Uh, male to male, um, gay couples, lesbian couples, uh, um, transgender, cisgender, uh, um Absolutely. Uh, and, and it's horrible either way. Um, like I said, no matter your sexual orientation, no matter who is in your household, there is not to be any abuse in that house household period over and out. Um, uh, if pets are there, if, uh, certainly children, um, like I said, children suffer the most, uh, I should know because I was one of them. So, um, uh, yeah, but, but there, the, and also people that are gay uh, or lesbian and they haven't said anything, it, it just even makes them feel guilty and more scared even to say anything because they know the violence is around the corner from someone, mm -hmm. you know, it could right. be a parent, it could be a grandparent, it could be a friend, it could be, a, um, a peer, so they, they have an extra layer of possible abuse. At Also Safe, we, we say, look, you put your keys in your, in your lock when you go to your place of residence, whether it be a townhouse, a co-op, a condo, a single family home, a multifamily dwelling, a two family home, a villa, a mansion, a mobile home, it doesn't matter. You put that key in your lock, you should feel like it's your sanctuary and not a war zone. You should feel like it's home and not hell. Um, yeah, so so um, there's a lot of layers or it, violence is a big spectrum. Um, there's, a, you know, and, and we focus on three aspects, verbal, physical, and sexual. Because for example, if your abuser takes away your money or takes away your account, that's financial abuse. However, it, uh, we see it as it hurts your persona. Like it's like physical abuse. Um, uh, so we don't like to really mini, mini categorize so much. So we kind of group it into three main categories, verbal, physical, and sexual. Um, uh, so that way it's, uh, it, 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 to keep it simple, if you gotcha. will. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely understand that. And one of the biggest things as a dispatcher, going back to my days working for the Kentucky State Police as a dispatcher, um, that you learn about is Stockholm Syndrome. And how hard is it for somebody to actually break hold of Stockholm Syndrome? Because, I mean, that's something that has mentally been beat into their 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 thinking and, and their way of life. Oh, yes, absolutely. See, what happens is with abuse, violence, chaos, dysfunction, the sooner you can... Uh, remove the abuser, the better off everyone will be. The longer that this goes on and every episode of violence will only escalate. It's only going to go one way and that way is it will be worse than the last one. So, and victims are conditioned to think, to believe their abuser. I'm um, nothing uh, he or she is right. Uh, how am I going to leave? Where am I going to go? Who's going to believe me? Um, they're the breadwinner. Uh, and they're conditioned to stay or to, to kind of um, uh, believe the abuser. And it, it does make it difficult to, to leave. But then again, we are not proponents of, of you leaving uh, th the victim. We're saying you stay right where you are. It's the abuser that has to be evicted uh, to leave, not not you, the victim. So it's a different kind of mentality. Uh, but yes, it's it's conditioning. And I have to say, uh, uh, abusers, um, especially sexual predators, they know what they're doing. They know how to hook and brainwash their victim um, by far especially children, because children are the most vulnerable, trusting, forgiving beings on the planet, you know? So, um, 
uh, just like animals, you know, pets, I, I would say, uh, they, they are forgiving, they're, they're trusting, they're vulnerable. Um, so, uh, you beat down someone enough. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to say, why bother? Why, why bother? Why bother leaving out there is scarier than in here when the reality is no in here is, is the scariest and out there is actually safer. Um, right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's very, very interesting. And it's something else that people aren't aware of. And, and I had to learn, uh, through working as dispatch is law enforcement, home uh, violence and abuse. And that, be that becomes even scarier because they know where the safe houses are. So in some cases, um, so that is a big thing too. Have you done any statistics on that? Uh, no, um, I'll be honest. No. Um, uh, but I know they are also a genre where people of authority, uh, police detectives, um, anyone in law enforcement, uh, those people that abuse. Yes. I've, I've heard of cases, uh, put it that way. As I do this work, I, I know of one woman. She's told me that her husband is very well known, but I think he's a political figure and he locks up everyone in his household. And she has, I believe three grown sons. They cannot, they cannot even go out for ice cream and he threatens them all the time. Uh, who's going to believe you? I'm so-and-so in town. Everybody knows me. Uh, I help everybody. I donate to this one and that one. Who's going to believe you that I am abusive. So it's a, it's a weapon, you know, and, and, and law enforcement. Yes. Um, I know of, um, uh, he used to be downstairs to my eye doctor's office. His father uh, is a pilot, a well-respected pilot. Um, this was a number of years ago. And he would beat the crap out of all of his kids. He would come home and abuse all of them. And, and this, this person who sold eyeglasses, he was one of those children and you know, uh, he's an adult and he's married with his own children and it's just heartbreaking. Um, and he would say, who was going to believe us? You know, my father was a pilot. He was, yes, there's a lot of pressures with, with, you know, flying the plane and, and control tower regulations and just like cops, you know, just like police, uh, they're under a lot of pressure. They see a lot of violence, but at the end of the day, it's no excuse. If anything, because you know, you know how bad it is, you should be doing better. You should be doing much, but you should be doing the exact opposite, the exact opposite. Go get help right now. Go get therapy right now. Have a team of experts. You can afford it. Get, get help. I'm sure you can, you could afford at least one therapist. Um, you're hurting your family. Your children want you to be happy. Your children want you to be safe and free and, and loving. And as, a, as we say at Oso Safe, you have one job as a former victim or even as a, as a victim. Uh, you must not repeat the cycle. You must not continue the abuse. That's your one job. Do all that you can to do that. You do that, then what was done to you was not in vain. It was, um, they didn't win. Your abusive parents didn't win. Um, you, you did better than them. Um, it, it, you have to make that your top priority. Um, yeah. So, so with law enforcement, yes, it's, it's tragic. Uh, uh, I, in fact, I think I, I, because I, I, I do know the shelters, um, here where I live. Um, there was one woman, uh, she, her husband or ex-husband, I believe was a cop and he would find her every time cause he knew where all the shelters were. And I think her, the shelter finally put her in hot in hotels. 
to mm. keep her protected and to make sure that nothing happens to her. And then eventually, I'm not sure, um, uh, I mean, she was able to break free and, and live her life. But yeah, they had to put her in, in undisclosed hotels. Um, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's, it's barbaric, really. <laughs> Now, if people wanted to get in touch with you and find out all this information and everything that you have to offer through OsoSafe, oh where do they need to go? My website is ososafe.com. Uh, I am on all the social media sites, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Alignable, um, uh, all the major social media. My direct email is sabrina at ososafe.com. Uh, my TEDx talk is broadcast, and uh, but on my website, I have uh, links to how to speak to me uh, if anyone wants to hire us. Um, I, I want to clarify, we're not a nonprofit. We're not a charity. It's not the approach that we take at OsoSafe. Oh um, we feel that victims don't need pity. They don't need handouts. What they need are solutions. They need resolution. In fact, I, I believe I, I say exactly that in my TEDx talk. Um, because the longer that we treat this as a charity, it's just going to be on the back burner, the back burner, the back burner. This needs to be resolved right now, right now. And what we're offering um, in real estate it, through the real estate industry where we're offering the Oso oh Safe Home Sweet Home package for landlords and tenants to educate all your tenants, have them sign our policy. This is an addendum to existing leases. Uh, we have technology in place to eliminate the he said, she said factor, but that's being uh, upgraded right now. Uh, to get your properties Oso oh Safe certified. What does that mean? Everyone is educated. Everyone is home violence conscious. Um, and the abuser is the one that gets evicted, not the rest of the family. The abuser gets evicted. First episode of violence, you got educated. You signed the policy. You know that there's a waiver in that policy. Um, we have therapists assigned to the building right ready ready for you you have a problem you feel like something is looming an episode of violence call your therapist work it out it'll prevent at least diminish and eventually prevent home violence you're educated you're held to a higher regard a higher standard in an oso oh safe certified building this is the approach that we're taking, merging Oso oh Safe and the real estate industry. I know if I had this growing up, my reality as a child would have been much different. I could tell you, hands down. <laughs> my father would not have gotten away with half the stuff that he got away with, and we would have been met better off for it. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. That's an interesting story. Sabrina, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. And it's so interesting. And again, ososafe.com. Oh that is where everybody can go, correct? Correct, correct. Absolutely. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Well, well, any any parting thoughts? You have the right to be safe at home. Um, just because you are a parent, does it give you the right to abuse your child? Uh, do not give pornography to our boys. Pornography is a big driver of violence. Um, we're not talking about sexual freedom. We're all for sexual freedom at Oso oh Safe, but pornography is the opposite of freedom. Um, and to this is a practice. We have to practice safety. We have to practice nonviolence. Um, uh, this is not just one and done. And we are very um, we em we empower. We are very uh, beyond hopeful. Um, we believe that every single household can be free of violence and just, and, and, and safe and free and, um, where everyone, everyone is, um, looking out for, for each other. And that's how it should be. Awesome. Thank you so much again. And maybe we'll have you back on the show sometime. Sure. I, I would love that. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you.